All right, so we were where we left off. We were playing with the body. I had rough cut the spines of this chameleon. And I was thinking like maybe they could go on the back ridge like a dinosaur. So Command T. I have to click on it to get the transform tools, but there they are. I can right click and I can then distort it as long as I can find the corners. Or I can warp it. Creatures are nicely organic, so that is helpful. And as long as you keep everything as its own layer, this is something you can definitely revisit and play with as, as you're working. So let's put all those body elements. I'm going to select all three of those layers, make a new group by clicking on the folder icon. I don't think I'm, I am going to use that pangolin at all. And just call that the body. And then that way I can move that group all together and kind of move it out of the way for now. Because I need arms. I need hips. I need something that goes within this kind of shell I'm creating, this armored shell. And then I need a tail and I need feet. So under arms, I found two references I thought were pretty interesting. One was of this golden eagle and their talons. And I really like how the talons are at a three-quarter view angled out. So I can flip that horizontally by right-clicking. And I think they're in pretty good sharp focus. I'll have to take out these leather straps, right? But even the leather straps are kind of cool. But they, they say a little bit too much of where it comes from. So if I was to crop that out as maybe the front arms, give myself lots of overlap. It's kind of fun to have feather texture to go with the duck's head. And then I duplicate that and I erase the layer it comes from. So those might be some arms to play with. But then I also found this skinny little squirrel. Now, like a duck, a squirrel is a very common creature, but it's got this wonderful angle to it, which gives me the collarbone, the arms, the hands. So that's something great to build on. It also gives me a really nice fluffy tail and legs, really good hips and legs. So this is gonna be an incredibly useful resource just for the skeleton. And it's all pretty much in nice focus. It's just the problem that the toes are covered up. But I'm gonna take a lot of this, even though that tail would be a nightmare to have to cut out. And I'm thinking of using a different type of tail. But I'm gonna take that body as skinny as it is And you see how it matches the resolution of my sketch. I'm going to try warping it a little bit and just posing it slightly. The angle's right, but I can mess with the proportions using warp. That starts to give my creature a sense of balance. Like it's balancing on its legs, can, sort, can support a bigger head. And it's okay that it's so skinny because it's going to have this shell that goes over it. I'm not sure about that tail yet. In fact, I might just cut that tail off and save it onto a different layer for now. So I'll just keep the core of the tail and then duplicate the rest of it. So how do you cut and then save to the clipboard, you do Command-X. And what that does is delete it, but then you make a new layer, 
and then you do command V to paste it back. And so now this fluffy tail is something I can use for something if I want. Okay, now I'm going to take the body. Come on. Go ahead and save because things are going slow. But I'm going to take the body, I'm going to squeeze my little squirrel body in between these layers. Put a shell on my squirrel body. And I want his arm to fit through right here. And I want to do it with, with a lot of overlap. But it has to do with the layer order. So first, I bring the group down. Come on. Maybe I'll have better luck if I just transform the whole group. So I'm hitting Command T to shrink it down. to match the squirrel body, which also happens to be the proportions of my sketch. Like that. And now I'm going to move the squirrel body layer down into my body folders. So there's the squirrel layer. I can move it down into the layers, and I can move the chest plate above it, right? So now I can transform that chest plate, which is too big. Let's turn these off for the moment. Transform that chest plate just to fit a little bit better. Maybe angle a little bit better on that squirrel's body. So I see the one arm coming out there, that makes sense. Then I'm going to take my opacity down. And this is what's called internal compositing. I'm going to take this arm that I've already cut out from a larger photo, and I'm going to cut it out again and duplicate it. So command J from my squirrel. So I just have that as a separate layer. Then I have this, and I'm going to move my arm in front of it. Okay. And there's plenty of overlap still for me to erase carefully away if I decide these are the proportions I want. So that gives my squirrel a chest plate, and it allows me to, because I haven't erased from the chest plate or anything, it allows me to pose my arm a little bit differently by rotating it. It also allows me to adjust the chest plate. By rotating it, by warping it. I want it to feel a little bit fuller. Just seeing with my history what I like. Yeah, I think I think that works for now. Okay, now I can think about these other parts. Well, I want the arm to be in front of that as well. So then I can adjust this to match the anatomy of that squirrel. Distort it a little bit, maybe warp it, so 
So I get a believable shell working with that arm. And fulfilling the silhouette of my sketch as much as possible. Okay, again, there's a lot that needs to be cut out. I don't think I'm going to be using this tail. I can go ahead and do a nice little snip of that. Good time to save. And then do I want to use these arms, the eagles? Well, if I do, Kind of good know now where they would go. Right. And I do love that hand, that gesture. So I can try a few different things. If I put those eagle's arms behind the, the chest plate, going to look kind of weird because there's a lot going on there. But I would do it the same way as I did with the squirrel's arms. Let's see, where's the eagle? There it is. So I would internally composite the one arm of the eagle, the one closest to us. Select around it. Lots of overlap. It's on its own, and I would move that on top of the chest plate. And it covers up so much of the chest plate, I don't know that the chest plate's even necessary. So what do I really like about this reference? I really like that hand shape and the claws there. So what if I just copy out the hands and the wrists, and maybe some of the, the feathery texture around that. And I get rid of everything else. So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna hold down Shift and select the other hand. Get all those claws. Minus the leather straps. Try to get you know, a sense of the feathers and the wrists. And I'm going to duplicate that onto its own layer. And then if I want to separate each hand out, I can do that by hitting Command X and then pasting onto a new layer creating a new layer and pasting it on. So now I have a hand that I can map onto the squirrel's arm. Right there. A little bit more unique and interesting. I can even make it a little bit larger. A little bit more interesting than the squirrel's hand. Then I can map this hand to the other arm. And I can play with its proportions and its size. I tend to like slightly oversized hands and feet. It's the, the animation character designer background in me. Isolate that claw. All right, so there's a lot of cleaning up to do. But I think you start to get the idea. Of how you're making your unique creature. 